It'll get loud. Don't worry. <laughs> I know, and it's fast. Wow. It's very fast. <laughs> So, just how to, how to disarm it. Hold the top, the square button, and yeah. double tap again. That's it, it's disarmed. Cool. And yeah. so how much does it weigh? 50 pounds. It's probably, probably yeah, it's probably on par then, yeah? It it's is, like a except, nitro with just a teeny bit of gas. Except the, yeah, because all the weight is up at the top. It's not down below, yeah. dragging you down. It feels much lighter than 50 yeah. pounds. Okay. It's amazing. So, you can put that on here. Okay. Okay, how do we uh, disable it? Just turn off the main switch there. I'm, I'm just going to leave it on while I set up my wing. Okay. Wow! Anyway. Reverse here, I think. Cool. Yeah, which will be good because Grab that thumb throttle is going to get in your way. Right, we are going to give this electric paramotor a shot here. This one is light, like the like the nitro. We're out at the beach here. What did you think? This is the first electric paramotor that I've ever flown.
So I can only really do comparisons in my experience with petrol powered paramotor that I currently fly, which is a Nitro 200. This seemed like a very light paramotor. I put on my back, you can see in the video that uh, uh, it seemed very light to me in terms of uh, comparisons. I'd say it's about the same as a, a Nitro 200 with uh, maybe about um, a couple liters of fuel in, in the gas tank. I was surprised by the amount of thrust that it actually had. I read the published numbers that they're, they're similar to the Nitro, but when you look at it, you see essentially something that looks like a drone. And it's hard to conceptualize that something, those small little propellers are going to generate anywhere near the thrust that you get with a conventional paramotor. So I was quite shocked in that, and that the throttle response was instant. That took some getting used to. So I'm glad that I took an opportunity to, to do a run-up by my trailer. In terms of the paramotor itself, it's a clever design. As you can see here, it, it folds up into a nice little packet for traveling. You just take out the batteries and the, and the hoop and it, the rest of it, the arms fold down with the, the motors and everything into one compact unit. And you just carry the batteries with you. Now the standard battery pack uh, is approximately 20 minutes of flight time. Right, so if you double that, you can get up to 40 minutes. One of the things that I really loved about it was the fact that you could just climb up and you let off of it and the prop stopped instantly, no noise, it's silent. That's real helpful on landing and helpful, you know, let's say you get up to altitude and you want to do thermaling or anything like that, it'd be good for that. The open PPG paramotor is unique in that it is a community-driven effort. Uh, the initial design is by Paul and Zach Whitehead. Technical specs on this paramotor are freely available uh, on GitHub. Being an open source community project, uh, anybody can join the project. Let's say that you think up some sort of feature that you'd like to have on this and you think you've got the skills to do it. You can go ahead and download the source code. You can uh, alter it and put it into your own paramotor put it out for the community and have other people try it and it can get incorporated into the next version. The version I flew was a version three uh, and the way that these are manufactured is in batches. So they collect the payment for a batch of paramotors, they order the parts, they will assemble them if you order the assembled kit or you can uh, buy it pre-assembled. Uh, it's about $400 difference if you get the assembly on it. The uh, cost of the paramotor is right in the range of $5,000. You have a choice of uh, an APCO split leg harness or the Dudek comfort harness. Um, I had never flown a paramotor that had the split leg harness before. So it was kind of awkward for me. But then once I got going and settled in, it seemed it did seem actually comfortable. My hang point was uh, a little bit back. I was kind of leaning back a bit. There's really only three places and we kind of guessed and moved all the way forward. So probably the center one would have been more appropriate for my weight, but it flew just fine. Uh, one of the things I didn't care for was the way that the the carabiners hook into the, the arms with the uh, straps that are supplied because the uh, carabiners sit uh, parallel to the arms as opposed to being perpendicular to the arms. And that means that uh, the risers will end up being either on the inside or the outside. And that led us in confusion, as you can see that here that I had a riser twist. Um, it flew fine. Uh, in normal conditions, I would probably just land and fix it. Uh, it wasn't unsafe. Uh, my flight was gonna be so short anyway, so. Uh, but that's something I didn't care for, and I, I think that with a different design on the straps that that, that could be solved. Uh, I'm really eager to see how this evolves over time that they are working on a single prop version that's going to have uh, a longer flight time. It's going to be more of a conventional looking uh, paramotor. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, go to openppg.com. I'll have all the links in the description of the video below. Overall, I was very impressed with this paramotor. I'd like to thank Craig Bedward for allowing me to fly his paramotor. I'd like to thank Paul and Zach Whitehead for spearheading the effort to get this going. And last but not least, I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for tuning into this channel. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button, bang that bell to get more content on this channel, and we'll see you next time.